thank you very much, Brian, and uh, thanks to Robert Oscar Lopez. Um, I'm going to try to give you uh, just a, a sense of how the, the homosexual movement, the homosexual lobby groups have, especially the human rights campaign, which I sometimes call the human wrongs campaign, because that's what they're all about normalizing, uh, but uh, how they, this ingenious way they, they've set upon uh, manipulating uh, companies. So, um, but before I do that, before I start on the first slide, I just want to remind you all uh, that this entire movement, uh, the sexual revolution, uh, has been built on lies. And I, I brought with me, because I like to show people this, this is the Sexual Behavior in the Human Male by Alfred Kinsey, the first, quote, sexologist, who was a very corrupt man, a man with, uh, with deviant impulses himself. And uh, in case you didn't know, this is, this is 1948, this came out. These are tables of showing tables, and I'm, I'm sorry, there's no children in the room. This is a table showing multiple orgasms in pre-adolescent males. This is incredibly, he took data from child molesters. Um, this is what is given a large credit for the, uh, the growth and power of the homosexual movement because Kinsey overestimated the number of homosexuals in society because his research was corrupt. There are parts of this book that I couldn't even read here. They're so, they're so disgusting and vile. I'll just read you one sentence. He says, this is, this is his research, which was a huge, promoted just amazingly by the media because he was an expert, uh, he was expert at PR and he manipulated the media into waiting for this book. So when it came out, they were all ready to spread it. Um, he said, the most remarkable aspect of, pre of the pre-adolescent population is its capacity to achieve repeated orgasm in limited periods of time. And then, as I said, this is just one table, table 30. Here's table 34. Uh, age, five months, 11 months. Number of orgasms, 11 months, 10 orgasms. Time involved, time involved, one hour. I mean, can you imagine? This is the basis of the sexual revolution. There's still a Kinsey Institute affiliated with the University of Indiana. Why is there a Kinsey Institute when this monster is the basis of it all? And so I want you to get to understand, as you've seen here, that the entire movement is based on lies. There's so many of them, it's hard to keep track. The 10% myth, 10% of the society is gay. So many, and, and, uh, and another important thing to remember is this movement should not be trusted with our children because the movement has not been, has not shown responsibility towards children. This is a book called Gay Talk, which I think was written in 1972 by a homosexual man named uh, Bruce Rogers. Uh, guess what a slang word for, um, there's a slang word in the, among homosexual men, say in San Francisco, uh, the word was chicken. Here's the definition in gay slang. Chicken, a young recruit, you know, uh, any boy under the age of consent, heterosexual, fair of face, and unfamiliar with homosexuality. Slang, here's a slang for chicken dinner, the definition in, his, in this book by a gay writer, sex with a teenager. So this is not a movement which has been responsible towards children, and yet we are now seeding them the educational system. So um, this is who I am, Americans for Truth About Homosexuality. We're a group uh, that uh, we monitor the, the movement. I've been doing this for 25 years. I'm also a reporter for LifeSite News, which I encourage you to uh, go to their website, LifeSite News, and subscribe. They, they supply some of the, the finest reporting in the pro-family movement on this issue and the life issue. Uh, next slide. Uh, this is uh, a Walmart. Uh, this is, I think, 2015. Uh, New, York time, uh, New York City Gay Pride Parade. Walmart uh, is a sponsor. They got Walmart. Now, if you, can, if you can win over Walmart, you can win over pretty much any corporation, the homosexual movement. Uh, next slide. Uh, as I said, it's a revolution. Even the, the victors now call it a revolution. It's not reforms, it's not civil rights, it's a revolution. And we know how revolutions often end up. And uh, this one is no, no exception. This is a book by a, 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 a pro-homosexual writer, Linda Hirschman. Uh, next slide. Um, you know, really quickly, because I want to get to the part about the corporations, but uh, these are just some key verses I put up about this issue. Uh, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Jeremiah 17, 9. There's a way that seems right to a man, but the end, that way, end thereof is death. Then as, we, as uh, Jeff, uh, Tom talked about, uh, Romans 1, uh, dishonorable passions. Uh, you know, we come at this from, uh, I'm a Christian, um, we don't come saying because we're better than people. We, we simply agree with God. We're all sinners. We needed Christ. We offer him to, to others. 
Uh, next slide. Um, and what I think one of the most important verses of all, 1 Corinthians 6, such, and such were some of you. There were ex-homosexuals in Bible times. And, and yet, um, this movement that talks about diversity and inclusion castigates and, and, and you know, just expresses great hate to people you know, like Robert Oscar Lopez and David Pickup who've come out of the movement. They show no tolerance and inclusion towards those people. So it's a very hypocritical movement. Um, uh, for, you know, flee sexual immorality, these are all verses that are relevant. And we, but we come with the heart of Christ. As Michael uh, Brown says, we offer forgiveness, but we, we say no to the agenda, to the agenda which is basically a sin movement. Uh, next, next movement. And I call it a sin movement. The activists don't like that. Here's another former homosexual, Stephen Black. He's speaking at our, our banquet in October for Americans for Truth. Stephen Black, was, uh, he was actually molested when he was young. He's uh, uh, on the board of Restored Hope Network. He has his own ministry for Stone. Wonderful resource. Out of the movement, happy, uh, happily married. Um, but notice how there's no visibility in the media or the corporate world for people like this. Next. Um, this is, I, don't, I wish I knew who, who, wrote, who made this statement, but I think it's so apropos. Those who hate the truth call truth hate. And it's almost as if, you, if you're not being called a hater, you're not doing anything effective on this issue because it's the main tactic of the other side. And I think another important thing on ex-gays is if you deny change, you're denying Jesus. I mean, mass murderers have been forgiven and are going to be in heaven. I know that's a hard truth for somebody, but if, if, if the grace can extend to murderers, certainly can extend to people who caught up in homosexual sin. Yeah. And yet, even now the so-called gay Christian movement is, and, and, the, and the gay conservatives, who I'm very wary of because they, they are not conservative on their pet issue. They may be conservative on taxes, on foreign policy, but when it comes to their issue, I've found that most uh, so-called gay Republicans, gay conservatives, are not conservative. If I could tell a quick story, Tammy Bruce is a very famous gay conservative. Uh, she's a lesbian with a radio talk show, she's on Fox News. Once she set me up on a radio show, she posed as a homophobe uh, talk show host, and she, I, I had put out a press release on Disneyland, uh, I think it was Disneyland, and how they had gay days, and I said, you know, parents have a right to know, because what happens on these, very, on these homosexual celebrations is, parents show up at the theme park, and they don't know it's a special gay activist day, and they're, they're kind of stuck there. They spend all this money, they travel there. So I said they simply should be warned, and she thought I was, that was a terrible thing, and so she, this is Tammy Bruce, who is now a very uh, you know, famous libertarian conservative on Fox News, she posed as a homophobe and she tried to get me to say that, that you know, she's, she's, she was like, well, don't you just wanna hit them sometimes? Talking about gays, do you wanna hit them? I said, no, we, we, just, we just disagree. We have a moral disagreement. And then at the last minute she says, well, I wanna tell you, my name is Tammy Bruce. And I'm the biggest out gay lesbian on the West Coast and you have, 30, you have one minute to respond. And I was shaking and I, I just tried to get out the truth that we disagree, to disagree is not to hate. I asked for the tape of Tammy Bruce's show and she wouldn't give it to me. So as I said, when it comes to their issue, beware of the quote gay Christians and the gay conservatives because often they're, they're activists on that issue. Uh, next slide. Uh, I, I do the sexual sin substitution test is what I call it. It may not be very academic, but it's very useful. Anytime you hear the word gay or homosexual, anything mentioned in the story or discussion, substitute another sexual sin and see if it makes sense. It, it rarely does. We never talk about incest phobes. Um, we don't talk about our adulterous, our adulterous Christian friends. Luster's pride parade, I mean, a lot of guys would be eligible for that, right? We don't talk about, we don't have Luster's pride parades. Um, we don't have Obama didn't issue a, pride, a porn user's proclamation month, right? And it goes on and on, but it just goes to show you there's always a special consideration for this. Why? Because it has such a powerful, well-funded movement behind it. Uh, next slide. No, there's no gay gene. This is, uh, this is Dr. Lisa Diamond. She is uh, higher up in the APA, that's American Psychological uh, Association. She's the editor-in-chief of the handbook. She said that sexual orientation is fluid and it is not unchangeable. This is last year, this is huge. This is a lesbian activist saying this, and because uh, I think Gallup finds that roughly half the population still believes that homosexuality is genetic. The science has moved away from it, but the homosexual lobby knew it was a powerful tool. Even the gay academics have moved away from it, but a lot of Americans still believe that, so we need to educate people on that. It's fluid, it's changeable. 
It's, it's, a, it's about behavior. It's not who you are, it's what you're doing. And everybody is responsible for their sexual behavior and you're, we're all responsible for, for what we do. Next. Okay, I call this the war on normal. I mean, every aspect of the agenda. Here's, here's Bruce Jenner, pardon my vernacular here, fake breasts, fake femininity, fake civil rights. This is Bruce Jenner, who was, <laughs> I was, when I was a kid, he was like, Bruce Jenner, he was on the Wheaties box, remember? He was a stud, he, he won the Olympic decathlon, for goodness sake. And now here he is posing for some makeup <laughs> product with these, you know, this whole artificial femininity. It's just laughable, and yet how does the media treat it? Deadly serious. Yeah. Don't ever violate the pronoun police, right? Yeah. I call them the pronoun police. If you don't say he for a woman who thinks she's a man, if you don't say she for a guy who thinks he's a woman, you're a transphobe, you're a bigot. Just, just don't play into their games. We have to get back to reality, and the media is basically now part of the homosexual movement. The media rare, sometimes won't even include another point of view in a story. They, they, they just go, it's like it could be written by the National Gay and Lesbian Task Force, or here's PFLAG. This is a, the parents, friends, and families of lesbians and gays, a homosexual activist group. This is 2007, Our Trans Children. This has been going on a long time. But the media, they, they, they pressure the media, and the media only gives token now uh, acknowledgement to the fact that there is another side. And somehow we have to, we have to get some of that back, because when you have such power with the media and the corporate world, it's hard to make progress. Uh, next slide. Okay, here's that same Walmart parade. Believe it or not, this is a sadomasochistic contingent. Some leather bar in New York is marching. So, so Walmart actually sponsored not just gay pride, they sponsored uh, leather pride, leather being the slang word for sadomasochism. Those are guys in leather vests and everything. You can't see it very clearly, but notice the flag on the left. Ironically, it's black and blue. It's, that's the flag for leather pride, sadomasochism, with the heart in the corner. So all these basic perversions all have their own flags now. So, and, and once you take away the boundaries, you take away God's boundaries on sexuality, how can you really say, say no to anything, right? The floodgates are removed, and that's why we're gonna see polyandry, all these polymorphous perversities. We're, we're, they're just, it just keeps coming. Uh, next. I call this Satan's talking points. This is uh, back in, I think, uh, what's the year on this? 2007, Harry Knox in a debate with my friend Matt Barber on MSNBC. This is just incredible. This is human rights campaign. This is the group which is driving the lobby, the most successful homosexual activist group. Look what he says. This is Harry Knox, a so-called gay Christian. What's clear from our experience and from science is that being gay or lesbian is an immutable, unchangeable gift from God, one for which I am very grateful, and it would fly in the face of my respect for God to give that gift back. It would simply be unethical and hurtful to our relationship with the Creator to give back gifts that God has given us. What could be a greater demonstration of calling evil good and good evil? It's completely flipped. Rather than the practice being a sin, it's a gift from God. And to reverse the sin would be to be hurtful towards God. This is blasphemy, and I call it Satan's talking points. Uh, next. This is, uh, the, this is the acknowledgement of 100% ranking by the Human Rights Campaign with what we're gonna talk about here, the Corporate Equality Index. This is what all the corporations want because they're all pandering to the homosexual lobby. Uh, next. Okay, I wanna go through these criteria and there's some I wanna talk about more than others, but essentially the way this works is the Human Rights Campaign has been doing this for over 15 years. They rate a corporation, they set up their criteria for 100% perfect ranking. And then the genius of what, the evil genius of what they do is, every couple of years, they ramp the criteria up. So if corporations are trying to get 100% ranking, they get that 100% ranking, and then two years from now, they have even higher standards to meet, and of course they don't want to fall off, so, so the, the gay activists go, oh no, Chevron fell off, you know. No, they, they, they know that they've got them. I mean, the gay lobby, uh, you know, if you thought Jesse Jackson knew how to shake down corporations, he, he had nothing on the gay lobby. I mean, he was like a school kid compared to the gay lobby. They've got this down to a science. Here's their booklet for 2017. This is 111 pages, I think. Look at this thing, it's huge. They rank the corporations and they're constantly upping their criteria. So uh, this, this is the, the ones that are in, in line this year and they're tightened up for next year. Okay, number one, you've got uh, the, the sexual orientation, uh, uh, 
codes in the, in, the, in the corporation, also gender identity, no discrimination based on basically gender confusion. Uh, that's the code, gender identity being the PC word for that. 1C, contractor, vendor, uh, non-discrimination standard. This is the latest thing, as I'll talk about. They're moving into vendors and, and subcontractors, suppliers. Uh, they, they will be mandating that's, that every corporation, whatever suppliers they use, meaning if you, you're a company that sells tires to GM, they're, now gonna, they're going to mandate beginning, I think, in 2019 that those companies have uh, all these standards. So it just, they keep reaching, they, they're inside and, they're, and their tentacles reach out. Okay, uh, two-way equivalent scousal and marital benefits, that's treating unequal things as equal. They're treating homosexual couples, so-called, with uh, normally married employee couples. Um, uh, medical, medical benefits, we're gonna get into that because what is transgender sex reassignment surgeries or so-called sex change? What, is, what do they fall under? Medical care, right? Yeah, Obamacare wanted it too. That's, okay, so two, uh, parity across spousal benefits. They want parity in all levels. Anything that's offered to a normal married couple, I, I'm sorry to, to be politically incorrect and say normal, but uh, they want available for homosexual couples. Okay, here's 2C, transgender inclusive health insurance coverage. Okay, next. Okay, uh, we'll continue with these. Uh, organizational competency, that's basically the training in the corporation, diversity seminars, always pro-homosexual. And this is another huge business. Bobby was talking about the, the schools, it's the same in the diversity business. It, this is billions and billions of dollars, and, and of course all the money's going to the, the pro-LGBT diversity people. It's not like they're saying, hey, let's bring in Robert Oscar Lopez here so we can have true diversity. Although I think we need that. We need something like that. So this is a huge business and it all, it all rewards itself, right? And these people are getting big money because it's corporations that have a lot of money. Um, okay, uh, employee research resource groups, that's basically a, a gay employees group. Um, number four, positively, okay, this is, four is key. Uh, four is, uh, is basically rewarding the homosexual community and what they do is they get points, they have to do a certain number of things. One of them is give grants to homosexual groups. And so you see these massive grants coming from big corporations. PepsiCo, I think, gave $500,000 one year to some gay event. Sometimes, and they, there's so much stuff, being, money being thrown around, and this is an opportunity for us. They're funding things that are, are just incredibly perverse. Uh, Southwest Airlines, we, we wrote about it for Americans for Truth, you can Google it. They funded uh, the National Gay and Lesbian Task Force Creating Change event, which is a huge homosexual organizing event. And in that, there was a play about Jesus being gay. A gay Jesus play was shown at that, at that event. Here, so here you have Southwest. You know, think about these corporations. They're all about what? The brand, right? Careful, watch the brand. Oh, you don't want to associate with Brian Kammerger because our brand. And yet, they're, and yet they're funding these, these, these events in the name of LGBT you know, uh, support that are, that are blasphemous, that are funding, uh, that are talking about perversion, and, and even perversions that are not accepted now beyond LGBT, like polyandry, poly, multiple partner relationships. That's gonna be, that's the next wave, because if love is love, right? That was one of the lines for gay marriage, love is love. Well, if love is love, what about three people who love each other? What about three men and a woman? You know? Um, so uh, they have, so giving money is one way. To, um, recruiting LGBT employees is another. So they're always showing up, recruiting more LGBT employees. And another, I think, is doing ads in, uh, in homosexual publications and such. And it's all rewarded with corporate dollars. And they have to to get the, the five points. See? You want the perfect rating, you've got to get that five points. So it fuels itself. Uh, next. Okay, here's the, this, this is the transgender one. Okay, just really quickly here, uh, notice health coverage, equal health coverage for transgender individuals without exclusions for medically necessary care. Okay, guess what's medically ne necessary? Yeah, and, and there, these operations are so horrifying, that you, it's hard to even talk about them, uh, especially at a pro-family conference. But uh, benefits, all through services related to gender transition, mental health benefits, coverage for medical visits, laboratory services, coverage for reconstructive surgical procedures, uh, 
plan language ensuring adequacy of network. So everything's available, and look at the last one. Dollar maximums on this area of coverage must never meet or exceed $75,000. So um, this is the, the beginning foray. The next round, they're upping the ante to make it, uh, I believe the next round, it goes even, uh, remo the next round, which is 2019, but I think it will be for the year 2018, removed all, removed all trans sexual transgender exclusions for transition related care, meaning anything that's applicable to a, a man and a woman, you know, a, say a male, uh, how he's covered with his family, his wife, kids must be available to, for transgender individual employees in the name of health care. So can you see how nefarious this is, how insidious, you know, just foaming the own agenda. The, the last one, go to the next slide, please. This is the, this is pure evil. Look at this one. CEI, that's the HRC Corporate Equality Index, Criterion 5. It, I'm calling it, this is not what it's called in the book, penalizing corporations that give to pro-family causes. So, employers, say Chevron, will have 25 points deducted from their score for a large-scale official or public anti-LGBT blemish on their recent records. And then nobody got it. Okay, so what does that mean? Robert Oscar Lopez goes to a corporation, finds a sympathetic ear. There are miracles, right? Would you fund my conference? They say, hey, we'll give you $5,000. Gay activist Joe Smith gets a hold of it, says, you funded this, he goes to the corporation. If they say, if they won't repent and say, oh, we may have a terrible mistake and probably publicly renounce Bobby Lopez, they will be take, fined 25 points off their score. So here you have a scorecard which gives money, which rewards corporations for giving tons of money to gay activists and pandering to every facet of the LGBT activist agenda and yet penalizes corporations for, for helping out conservatives. I think one of our things we have to do is let people know how corrupt the system is and we need to find targets, whether we focus on one, Brian will talk about that, how we do it, but we've gotta find them and we've gotta delegitimize this scorecard that the Human Rights Campaign puts out because it's about as illegitimate as the Southern Poverty Law Center, a far left organization with really shoddy research is in calling people like us, all three of us here have been labeled hate, uh, hate groups. The Southern Poverty Law Center is, you know, they manipulate hate and what does the media do? They say, oh, uh, a certified hate group. Certified by who? Cer certified by this left wing whack job group, the, the Southern Poverty Law Center. You know, so we have to work through these media manipulations which are everywhere. Okay, next slide. Okay, here again is, is a, the, the thing that goes on the windshield for the corporations put this in their ads, start looking for this. That's the human rights campaign equal sign. You know, they're, they're, they're basically a radical egalitarian organization, but they call it equality because equality sounds really good, doesn't it? How can you be against equality? Well, remember that Marxism and communism was done in the name of equality. Millions upon millions of people were murdered in the name of equality. Okay, next slide. Okay, Texas Competes. This is where you guys are. Uh, this is the group which is uh, uh, Texas corporations who are on the side of the LGBT lobby in this SB6. Is that the name of the, the bill? SB6? The bathroom bill. The bathroom bill. This, this, is the, this is the main, one of the, one of the efforts and look what they're saying. These are signers, they've got 1,250 corporate signers. Go on the site, just Google Texas Competes. All signers committed to promoting competitive, ec economically vibrant Texas. See how they're trying to co-opt the language? If you're not pro-LGBT, you can't be competitive. They constantly are defining the frame of the argument. We're always reacting to the frame. What we need is a movement, and I think Brian Kammerker is in the vanguard of this, we need a movement that where we set the frame and they react to our frame. Because we're always reacting, and face it, even the religious liberty fight, what are we doing? We're reacting to their frame. And what is the frame? We believe that in order for Texas businesses to compete for top talent, must have workplace and competitive communities that are diverse and welcoming for lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender people. What about welcoming for Christians? What about welcoming for Orthodox Jews? Who, who want their, I mean, it's all about validation, right? Validating the employees. What about validating your Christian employees? 
And that's, that might be a way in for us. Because it's hard to say no to people in the name of inclusion and diversity. But we have to force them to do that. Okay, so we, be, we believe that tra treating all Texans and visitors fairly is essential to maintaining Texas' strong brand as the premier home, home for talented workers, growing businesses, entrepreneurial innovation, and the thriving travel and tourism industry. And so they're trying to sell this, even in Texas, this great red state, which so many people across the United States look at Texas for their hope and to say we can, you know, they, they want to win in Texas. Yeah because they know that will break the spirit of people all over the country. I mean, I'm from the People's Republic of Illinois. You know, I can't wait to leave. We've lost almost every aspect of this agenda. But a lot of people in Illinois are moving to Texas. They want, people want freedom. And this, this movement is anathema to Christian values, to biblical values, to genuine freedom. They, they are the opposite, and yet, it's hard to convey that to people. We almost have to do it like the old Soviet Union. There was a thing called Samistats, which were uh, informal publications that people would make their own news because they couldn't trust Pravda and Izvestia, right? They had, to, they had to go underground and they would copy them on copy machines and they would circulate news. That, that's what we are, even with the internet, because I forgot to say in the in this film on the ex-gays, the one with uh, Stephen Black, the former homosexual, Vimeo, which is the second biggest free video, you know, Vimeo, like YouTube, only Vimeo. They just cut all of Restored Hope Networks and David Kyle Foster's, who's another ex-gay, uh, his group was called Pure Passion. They cut all the videos of ex-gays because they said they demean homosexuality. So even in this internet culture, we have to have safe platforms that will, that where we can get out the truth because we have the truth. And I'll end with this. Imagine if a brave Christian in 1948, and there were people who fought Kinsey, but it obviously wasn't done effectively. Because imagine if there were people like Gloria, the, the brave teacher in the back there, who said, wait a minute, why is the media celebrating a book which is taking data on baby orgasms? Here it is. Here's the tables. Look at it. Published by Saunders Publishing, I think based in Philadelphia. Why was this book allowed to be, to gain ground? Why was Kinsey allowed to become the fraudulent basis for the sexual revolution? And why is the homosexual lobby allowed to dictate who is, who is fair, who is equitable? Why are they the arbiter? They are corrupt. We're talking the hardcore activists here. Of course, we, we yearn to have people who are struggling with, with, their, with their sexuality. We yearn for them to be healed, come to Christ, she have their lives changed like so many people have, but they're not running the movement. The movement, these are hardcore activists and they are set on change. It's not about each issue, it's about changing the culture. Thank you.